Good morning, everybody joining us today for our third session about geology games. And this one is called Fossil Frenzy. My name is Tobias Ra. And my name is Ali McPhee. I'm a BSc student here at Laurentian. And before we start, we want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands on the, of the Tikamekshing uh, Anishinaabek at Laurentian University campus, Sudbury, Ontario. And we extend our deepest respect to all indigenous peoples of North America. So we um, will play a game today. It's a game show in the end. So it will be including learning about fossils and what we do at the Hartville School of Earth Sciences. There's multi, many disciplines, including paleontology that our uh, students um, from the BSc to the PhD levels are um, investigating, doing research on. But in this teaching session, we want you to um, note all the different things. We'll do a recap at the end to tell you again about all the names that we have learned about. There will be some scientific names of fossils. And in the end, we will play a Kahoot. And in that Kahoot, you will be able to win one of our Minecraft inspired rock identification games that um, will be given or sent to the third top ranking players. Um, to play a Kahoot, um, what you will need to do is um, download the app if you have a device to do that. And if not, you can still play it if you go into um, a browser and type in this URL, Kahoot IT. So I've put it in the chat for everyone that um, you can access the game without actually signing up. You just have to uh, do a pin, write a pin in, and we'll do a test Kahoot in the um, beginning. So we will um, know how to do that. So our session today is all about fossils. And to start with, I wanna show you a modern seashell. So this is something um, that is a gastropod. Um, and the informal name is a snail. You see this as a modern seashell because it does include some organic materials. So all those uh, orange pigments would be um, a sign of, that it actually not is a, it's not a fossil yet. If something is pulled out of the rock as a trace or a body fossil, then it will look rather like this, like this scene of different uh, fossils that had been laid down in some sediment and have been preserved for us to find. And um, the one, the biggest one I have, I will lift that uh, first is uh, one that can be found very close to Sudbury, Ontario. So we are um, close to this island called Manitoulin Island. And on that island, we can find these um, remnants of cephalopods. So kind of related to squid that um, used to have a shell and the shell has been preserved really well because shells are hard and do not decompose as organic matter does. So these are giant predators of the ancient seas on earth that um, I will explain a few details about that a bit later when I'm using my microscope. So before we go um, into the detail about fossils, I do also want to mention that um, when organisms make their hard parts, they do um, make that out of calcium carbonate. And that is available in the sea. The calcium and the carbonate can be then put together as a mineral to make the shell of a organism uh, for it to protect itself. And that shell can be staying in fossil record for us to see later on. And that shell is usually made out of um, calcite or calcium carbonate or aragonite. All of them are actually calcium carbonate. So I'll demonstrate something to that effect later on. Um, in terms of research, on at our school, Hartwell School of Earth Sciences at Lawrence University campus, um, we have um, a professor, Dr. Elizabeth Coral Turner. Um, she's our paleontology professor. And uh, Ali, have you taken any courses with Dr. Turner? I have actually. So last year I got the chance to take paleobiology with Dr. Turner. And there we learned all about marine life. Um, because even though, you know, you always think of fossils as dinosaurs, 
really the, the true uh, most important fossils are the marine life that we see today, which is what we're going to be talking about for most of um, the webinar, because they are truly really important, um, especially um, because that is where most of the animals we see today evolved from. Um, especially because the ocean also holds a lot of oxygen and that is where a lot of the first rocks are. And yeah, it was a really interesting course and she did a really awesome job teaching it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really cool. Really, really cool. Thank you, Ali. And to that effect, we have actually um, um, a find from just last year, Dr. Turner had possibly discovered the oldest animal fossil in the world. It was big in the news last year. And if you can, Ali, uh, share that video that um, talks about that find by Dr. Elizabeth Coral Turner, that would be great. If not, I have it loaded as well, but we'll mute ourselves for three minutes. And there may be some questions on that Kahoot um, in this video. These wiggly lines could be the oldest fossil animal ever discovered. While they may look like random markings on a rock, if these are the remains of an ancient animal, it would push the first physical evidence of animals on this planet back by 300 million years. Animals are multicellular eukaryotes complicated life forms that consume organic material, breathe oxygen, and live now as the varied and complex creatures we see all around us. But their earliest ancestors likely started small and kept things pretty basic. They might have even been a sponge. Okay, not quite like that, but sea sponges are a kind of organism still in existence today whose close relatives are a good candidate for early animals. That's because they have simple body plans, essentially tube-like structures that filter feed, and they have relatively few types of cell. But determining if sponges were the first kind of animal has been tricky. The earliest fossils that scientists are relatively sure are animals come from around 550 million years ago just before the Cambrian explosion. Older fossils have been quite contentious, as it's hard to work out what's an animal and what's not. The new find would push back the first evidence of animals by 300 million years. The unusual patterns were found in the Northwest Territories in Canada. One argument that this really is an ancient fossil animal is the complex branching structure, similar to some modern sponges. Not everyone is in agreement though. It's possible the patterns could have been made by bacterial mats. It would have also been difficult for animals to survive 890 million years ago. This was a time with very little oxygen. But the fossil was found intermeshed with bacterial structures. So the organism could have lived in close proximity with photosynthesizing bacteria in little oxygen rich oases. The fossil also looked very similar to more recent fossils from around 500 million years ago that are also believed to be ancient sponges. If this really is evidence of an 890 million year old animal, it would have survived through massive climatic changes, including an extreme cold period some call Snowball Earth. While there is a debate about the fossil's animal nature, if true, it could give us a new understanding of how our ancestors formed almost a billion years ago. I noticed in the credits they didn't have uh, the full name of Dr. Elizabeth Coral Turner, but um, it was still an amazing find and is now still debated. And it is possibly the oldest uh, animal fossil ever found. <laughs> Now, before we go into the microscope, I do want to share my screen and see if we can play that test Kahoot. Now, this one is without the pressure. We will actually be able to um, 
I just want to make sure that my sound is coming through. Play the classic mode. Ellie, let me know with a thumbs up if you hear the sound. Okay, we'll keep the same pin, but uh, this time I'll do it with the sound. So very good to see everybody join us. Uh, we'll start in about 20 seconds. In our Kahoots, we typically have um, pictures. When the question appears, you'll read the question first, and then you'll see a picture, and you'll choose one of the four options. Sometimes it's only two options, true or false. So be as quick as you can, uh, pressing the buttons on your browser or on your cell phone to gain the maximum points possible. So it's very good to see everybody joining. Seems like we have a few school classes today. Please let us know in the chat, which schools are you from? We'd be very curious to see which classes are competing against one another possibly. So 20 seconds are up and we will Start. Still see people joining, but this is only a test, so let's do it. First question Which province is Sudbury located in? Very nice. And I see that we have Sudbury Lockerbie playing today. Very nice, grade nine geography. We'll root for you. Second question. Where do most Sudburyans search for fossils? Joseph Island, Napool Island, Bruce Peninsula, Montreal Island. And I think it's Manitoulin Island. That's the closest place where we find really cool fossils. Next question. What is this? The big nickel is the correct answer. And let's see who gets that podium. This is only a a make-believe win because you don't actually win anything yet. Oh, gosh, <laughs> forgot the last question. You want to win one of these boxes. All right, we'll try our best in that next Kahoot. But for now, we've got Bard Yang. Max. And Sadie. Congratulations for that first trial win. And uh, we'll go <laughs> we're going to unshare this and do a microscope share for now because we'll actually talk about what actually made that, that all that oxygen that uh, we now breathe because it didn't, it wasn't really like that when those first possible animals were discovered by, um, and we actually have this oxygen because of some other organisms that, I'm just trying to find the correct screen here. Strange, uh, do you see um, fossil, Ali? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Oh, well, okay. I think I, I think I know what my technical issue is. I have to escape, press escape. It should be working now. 
thumbs up, no? Mm. It's uh, just saying that the screen is sharing. It's not really showing anything. Okay. That's okay. I can talk a little bit about. I'll fix this in the meantime. Yeah. So basically, um, what's really cool is I actually had to buy us for my um, geology, my first year geology lab, which was, he was a great introduction to that because it was really scary coming into university. And I was like, well, what is a lab? I have to hand in something at the end of this period. Really not fun. Um, but it was a great opportunity to truly learn um, about everything, you know, geology, pretty much. Um, and he's used, utilized this microscope before, and it is a really cool um, piece, especially because I went to school during COVID um, for my first year. Um, so I did actually get to see, you know, true hand samples um, through this microscope, which was really awesome. Um, and then I can also touch on a little bit about um what uh the oh there we go i was gonna say i can touch on a little bit about our next piece which is a stromatolite take it away tobias all right so on the stromatolite it actually doesn't show any organisms it shows shows you a kind of like a trace of mats microbial mats microbes that were used to be um the only living organisms on the planet when there was no oxygen. So way back before any seashells appeared in the sea. And these microbes, they're kind of like floating close to the water surface, sometimes right on the surface. They're comparable to the blue-green algae, what we find today. And um, you can see this, this kind of remnant as these wavy lines all across this fossil. The wavy lines were kind of like the wavy mats. Um, made by microbes and they were sticky and sediment like sand and clay stuck to that and preserved them in this kind of rock that we call stromatolites. So sometimes the stromatolites are gray like this and they're kind of polished. I can show you the piece that I've uh, just shown under the microscope. It is found uh, on Highway 17 close to Thunder Bay and I know that there's a couple of people here from the Thunder Bay area it would be really cool to actually investigate the outcrop where this was found. Um, it is um, close to Thunder Bay on Highway 17, Nipigon Road outcrop. Would love to go there one day and it's actually um, confirmed in one of the textbooks. You see the same kind of stromatolite from that Nipigon area, Thunder Bay, um, that made the oxygen. So this kind of microbes, they were photosynthesizing oxygen uh, creating a buildup of oxygen so animals can evolve further. Um, you can actually still find stromatolites nowadays, like this uh, person is standing next to one of them in a very salty part of um, the uh, north of Perth in Australia. There, they can still actually survive without being, being eaten because there are many, many um, snails and other organisms that actually eat these away. So stromatolites can also look like this, but if you ever think you find one, look for these wavy lines. That is a sign for it being a um, remnant of some blue-green algae from the ancient past. So of course, we now have had a lot of evolution happening and we've got these really amazing creatures found in the sea, like this sand dollar. It actually is filled with sand. You can still, it's kind of heavy. And um, it is uh, kind of related to the sea urchins and also to some organisms that made these hockey puck type shapes. So they're actually these uh, uh, stems that when they break, they fall into pieces that look like hockey pucks. And we call these crinoids that um, have been living in the ancient past and also are animals, even though some people think they are plants because they look like a bush kind of, they are animals living on the ocean floor. So I'll mention crinoids again later on, but let's look at some really good comparisons of, um, of rocks. So the first thing I've shown you was um, the seashell that has pigments on it. It's still organic material, not really a fossil yet. So these seashells can actually um, become less rich in those pigments. So this one is kind of like brown. 
And another one that was pulled right from the rock, it does not have any more pigments and it is kind of filled with rocky material and minerals. This all is snails or in scientific terms, we call them gastropods. I will um, show all those words. Now in the geologic history, we've also had a lot of evolution of um, colonial organisms. So let's peel our eyes to these number two, no, number three and four. So you have um, number three, that's a solitary coral. I have a few right here as well. So if they're kind of loose out of the rock, they look like this. And each one of these um, bigger areas or uh, surfaces were inhabited by one of the organisms that is a polyp. So a coral that um, everyone had their own house kind of. But sometimes they were living in a colony and this one is the so-called honeycomb coral that you can find very commonly on Manitoulin Island. It is um, a colony, just like the one you see under the microscope kind of honeycomb shaped and they are a bit larger than a millimeter so those any one of those um holes like the caves that these organisms were living in um were larger than a millimeter but right next to it you can probably tell that where my pen is showing right now there's also some holes there so let's zoom into that that is an organism that often is confused with corals but the rule of thumb that we um, teach is that if the holes are smaller than a millimeter, then it is a so-called bryozoan. So let me show you those first few words that I've uh, mentioned so far. That will set us up for success in the Kahoot because we will actually read all these um, words um, in that in those multiple choices. So we've got a solitary coral. Uh, it's a carnivore, but it has its own house, but in the colony. You've got many houses stuck together as um, these honeycombs. So all of these are corals. You don't have to remember the phylum, all that Latin is not so much fun, but let's look at the gastropods that I mentioned before. So we've got these snails. So they can be flat or they can be like a turret, like a tower. Uh, they are always um, curled up. And they actually, if you were small enough to go inside of one of these shells, you can actually go right to the center because there, would be any, there wouldn't be any wall separating um, you. And I can demonstrate that with this piece here. So you can see this one's kind of cracked. And if you were small enough, you can actually go and walk into the tunnel right down to the center of this gastropod or this snail. Now that is different with um, organisms that can look quite similar like these aminoids or nautiloids. Uh, these are the relatives of squids. You can kind of see like a squid creature uh, coming out of there. And um, they used to be um, like these conical elongated shapes that with a bit of luck you can find on Manitoulin Island, some really large ones, top carnivores of the ancient seas. But there's only a few of these squid that still have shells. And believe it or not, there's actually a way of finding a nautiloid shell in Minecraft. I just learned that today. So this is the real nautiloid shell. This is one of those uh, cephalopods that um, can, um, that are curled up, look like a snail, but they're not because what you, when you look inside, there are all these separations. So all these walls that prevent you from going right into the center. So this was cut. It's a very delicate part of the reason why I'm wearing gloves. Um, and it's very rare to find it, uh, a, a nautiloid shell, even in Minecraft, of course, but try your luck. Now, this is again, a fossil that's been easily confused with um, snails. So look at the walls. If it has walls, then it's um, cephalopod or an ammonite, or if it does not have walls, then it's a gastropod or a snail. So try to remember that. I'll put away this stuff. We'll talk about a few more fossils before we play that Kahoot. Because we only have five more minutes. 
So, um, Ali, do you want to talk about this fossil here? So it's a trilobite, and we've got one from the Burgess Shale right here. Yeah, so these were so donated by the um, Royal Ontario Museum. So we have them in our uh, display case. So I took them out for just for this purpose. Yeah, so um, basically trilobites are now extinct arthropods. They first appeared in the Cambrian period and were one of the most dominant forms of uh, marine life in the sea. They can be really itty bitty and then they can be huge, like ginormous. Um, they are one of the oldest arthropods and they have many different orders uh, of them, which separates them based on how many thoracic segments they have, which the thoracic segments are um, the little lines in between leaning up to the head, um, their size. So like I said, they could be really small. They could be humongous. Um, whether they have eyes, because some trilobites actually don't have eyes and some do. Um, how big their head is compared to their body. So some of them can have really, really big heads and some of them can have like small bodies so they can look a little weird um, and much more. And a fun fact about these guys is that they are actually closely related to horseshoe crabs, um, which we can see on beaches today. Um, and another fun fact is that um, we have a master's student that's actually working on some trilobites with Dr. Turner. So, yeah. Very good, Ali. So um, I will um, show just a few more things before we go into, into that final Kahoot. So under my microscope right now is one of those uh, remnants of a um, cephalopod. So you can see that it has walls internally just by these uh, suture patterns that you see on the side. It's very intricate patterns. And if I zoom in all the way, you kind of see it more clearly. And then we have a few modes of preservation. So there's different ways of um, animals actually getting trapped in sediment. So if you have a whole body fossil like this ammonite, it's a body fossil, it's the whole thing, or that trilobite that um, Ali explained really well. Now, the um, ones that are not so complete are um, sometimes a mold or a cast, but um, very importantly, sometimes if you go to Manitoulin Island, you will actually want to test if you have a fossil by using acid. Another reason why I'm wearing gloves, because if it is made out of calcite, it is actually a um, pretty much the or original material still, still, and that calcite will fizz with the acid. But if I um, go to that fossil hill formation, for example, on Manitoulin Island, and I find one of these colonial corals that would have been calcium carbonate, and it would have fizzed in the first um, millions of years that they were formed, they are not fizzing anymore. So that acid is just being absorbed into the structure because that calcium carbonate was dissolved and replaced by a different mineral that does not effervesce. So there's a couple of changes have happened over the millions of years that these fossils have been in the rock. And another change would be um, if they are um, becoming fossilized wood. So anything that has pores, um, like wood has pores or a dinosaur has pores. Now I've got a piece of a dinosaur bone here. This is a real piece of a dinosaur bone. And you can see if I zoom in that it is actually filled with some material. So those pores have been filled and it is heavy as a rock, meaning that there's minerals that precipitated inside the pores of rock. And the same thing for this slice of a wood trunk also has been uh, filled with rock. So it's heavy as a rock, no surprise there. So we call that permineralization or petrification. So it's petri petrified or Permineralized. And the really the last thing I want to say is um, when you have fern leaves or any plant matter, and you can see that this fossil here was plants originally that were made out of multiple elements, including a lot of carbon. 
The only thing that is left here is carbon. So we call this carbonization. So that's the same process as making coal. Um, coal will, is made by everything that is easily um, decomposing and then um, flying off as a gas will disappear, but the carbon will stay as a very thin film. This is called carbonization. And I almost forgot that I do have a little piece of amber right here. So here is some Baltic amber. And we've learned about dinosaurs disappearing with a big meteorite impact some 66 million years ago. And we saw Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. Now, if you shine a light through this, you can see that um, there is um, quite a few insects in there, maybe some that are extinct. It's like most of, the, most of the animals that I've shown you today are extinct. And big question, is it possible to extract, extract the DNA from one of these bugs and recreate a dinosaur that was bitten by this bug? I would say no, because um, DNA is a very um, delicate molecule. And I can stop my share because I've talked about everything I wanted to. Um, very delicate molecule that easily breaks, especially over millions of years in the rock record. It will not last. So it's very bad news for the dinosaur lovers. Uh, I always want, asked myself that question because I did watch those movies a long time ago, especially Jurassic Park. And I think it is time for the next quiz. If you have any questions about anything that we've done, uh, presented so far, you can put them into the Q&A and um, we'll determine the winners uh, with this Kahoot that I'm loading shortly. Bear with me, it just takes a couple of seconds. We'll have a new pin showing up. And here it is, it has 16 questions. Now we'll play the classic mode to determine three winners today. And while it's loading, I think it would be cool to hear um, as well if you folks have a earth science class um, at your schools, which would be interesting. So absolutely, let us know. Let us know, Ali. If you don't mind, um, I have a, a a poll about which was your favorite fossil. You can launch that poll for those who are waiting. We okay. like wait another thirty seconds until um, we start the game. We will have good time. And the game will only take about ten minutes. Time will be Mind Over Magma in three weeks, and in four weeks we'll play the Sedimentary Special, and in about six weeks we'll play Under Pressure, and maybe we'll continue the series of geology games, because we're making more of these Minecraft-inspired rock identification games, as long as the fun lasts and the learning lasts, we'll be happy to see He wants to actually learn and play, which is great to see. All right, still people joining, but we'll have to start in 20 seconds. I don't know, Russell. I don't know the answer to box fire, fluorescent wood. I have an opal inside that. Uh, slice with tree trunks, and um, I do not actually know anything about Foxfire, but I'll know it. Maybe Ali knows something about Foxfire. Alright, we do have to start in the interest of time. And off you go. Good luck, everybody. 16 questions, 10 seconds per question. Look at the pictures. Sometimes it's true or false.
which organisms make stromatolites. Continue on. True or false? Most of the oxygen in our, in our air was produced by the microbes preserved as stromatolites. Yes, it's true. And there was actually a chance. There was a publication just last year, if you check our Instagram, about volcanoes pushing out some of that oxygen as well. Um, almost 2 billion years ago. So let's look at um, what is the name of Laurentian University's paleontology professor? And it's Elizabeth Coral Turner, that's correct. What is this body fossil? Look closely. Smaller than a millimeter holes. I didn't get the mention of arthropods and bivalves, so those aren't going to be answers today. So bryozoan is that fossil. Let's look. Which of these is found in the Burgess Shale? And the title by the correct answer. Let's look at the next one. How long ago was the end Cretaceous? <laughs> are very important in Earth's history, and that's the most recent mass extinction in the end Cretaceous. Victoria is leading. What is this body fossil? Coral is correct. Very good. And what is this one? Rhinoid is correct. Let's see. Which of these is not a cephalopod? The only living species with a shell is that nautiloid on the bottom left. And it's right, the crab was not a cephalopod. True or false? A sponge is an animal. True or false? Five seconds long, but you know it, it's false. Uh, sorry, it's true. So what is a coral? Look at these definitions. Yes, it's a marine invertebrate lives in the sea. And what is amber again? You saw that sample. And type 3 sap would be the correct answer. Now, dinosaur DNA can successfully be taken from insects. 
questions three more so what is our msc student william scott's expertise <laughs> will buy for the correct answer So what are both of these fossils? Number three and number four. Keep your eyes on the picture. Those were corals. One is solitary, one was colonial. Some people are really breaking through that 10,000 points mark. What is this body fossil? It has no septum. So gastropod, snail, exactly. And we've got the podium already. Let's see, number three, Hayden, I need your address to mail one of these boxes to you. And Frank, you as well, so please send me an email. I'll type out my email address shortly. And if not, Victoria, wow, you're, you're the winner with 13,948. So if anybody of the winners don't want the box, we do know the runners up. Just let us know if you don't want it, don't give it to the runners up. And if not, you can still win one of these games in the next round, which is in exactly three weeks from now, 10 o'clock. Invite other school classes to come on, play this game. So uh, turn off the sound for a second. And all your friends and family who want to learn about geology, want to play the game, uh, keep this going. Please join us next time as well. All our dates are listed on our outreach page and we'll type in our um, email address into the chat. And see if you have any more questions in the Q&A, we'll be happy to answer those in the remaining three minutes. So I'm just gonna type in my um, email address. And uh, Ali, do you want to say something else? Um, I don't know. Um, we love feedback. So let us know what we can do better um, through emails or just by, you know, typing in the Q&A. Um, I think Laurentian is a really great school to come for, for geology. Um, last year, I got the opportunity to go to none of it um, in the summer for my summer job, which was really, really cool. And so, you know, if you choose to come in Laurentian, come to Laurentian in the next following years, you know, you can be introduced to so many different opportunities like that. Um, and the Harquell School Club is also really a fun activity. We get the chance to go to PDAC this year, which is really, really exciting. PDAC is Prospectors, um, what well, stands for Prospectors, and Developers Association Conference, I believe. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a really cool experience to network and get to know all of that. Um, yeah, it's it's I've learned a lot in the past few um, years, and yeah, really exciting. Thank you so much, Ali. Great to have you here with us. Um, maybe one last note: we do have a Laurentian open house coming up on Saturday, March 11th from 10 o'clock to three o'clock. Please check us out. Come here on our tours. You'll see any one of these uh, samples that I've shown in our display cases. Uh, we have our display cases on the eighth floor of the Willett Green Miller Center. Pay us a visit on that um, Laurentian open house. Our first tour is at 1030 in the morning on that Saturday. Uh, if you make it in time to the Parker building, you will be able to go visit um, any of our facilities. So thank you everybody for the participation and please join us again next time. If you haven't won it, please email the winners, please email me um, your address so we know where to send this boxes. So the three winners on the podium. Thank you everybody. Thank you, Ali. I'll see you next time. Thank you. So we'll share the results as the last thing. A lot of people like the ammonite. Very good. 
Goodbye.